And we would like to now welcome you to crediting Popcorn Hominy, Corin Massa, and Massa Harina in Child Nutrition Programs. Mm -hmm. I am Deborah Eisenbarth, a nutritionist with the Child Nutrition Programs, along with my colleagues Tim Vesquez and Ann Garceau, will be providing you today with an update on food crediting in Child Nutrition Programs with technical guidance for crediting Popcorn, Hominy, Corn Masa, and Masa Harina, and an overview of menu planning resources available through Team Nutrition. This is the fourth in a series of five webinars on crediting updates in child nutrition programs. To start off, let's do a quick poll. We would like to know who we have in attendance. Please select the answer that best describes where you work. Is it childcare, schools, or are you with a state agency? Do you work with FNS at a regional or the national office? And if none of these answers fit you, then select other. All right, looks like we got a variety of folks on the line, which is great. Okay, in this webinar, we will cover some background about why food crediting was updated, comments and feedback from the request for information, policy changes implemented based on feedback received, go through some examples with popcorn, hominy, corn masa, and other corn products, and overview of technical assistance resources available. I'm now going to hand the presentation over to Tim, and he'll provide an update on the RFI and resulting policy changes. Welcome, Tim. Thank you. Hi, everyone. As Deborah mentioned, I'm Tim Vasquez, and I work in the school programs branch of the Policy and Program Development Division here at the Food and Nutrition Service. I'd like to open with a few of our commitments around food crediting. The crediting guidelines specify how individual food items contribute to the child nutrition program meal patterns. Several factors impact how food products credit towards reimbursable meals, such as volume, weight, and overall nutrition profile. When we speak with our partners, one thing that we hear consistently is that they would like us to work towards streamlining, menu planning, and food crediting whenever possible. We are interested in providing additional menu planning options that meaningfully aid program operators in their efforts to build meals that children will enjoy. USDA has been listening and shares in this desire to simplify the menu planning process for all child nutrition program operators. Over the last couple of years, we have sought public input for, for ways that we can provide more flexibility within the program. We have engaged in a multi-year effort which took the opportunity to improve customer service by helping our agency gain a better understanding of stakeholder opinion and gather innovative ideas from all who care about our children's nutritional needs. In 2017, we published a request for information to provide all of our stakeholders and partners the chance to share their thoughts and opinions on crediting and to gather ideas that maximize program operators' ability to serve healthy, appealing meals that children will enjoy. We encourage stakeholders to submit comments on specific food items and also to share their ideas to make crediting more simple, fair, and transparent. The public comment period for this request for information closed in April 2018. We have received 437 comments to 25 questions posed to the public. The majority of comments came from program operators and individuals but we also received comments from the food industry, advocacy organizations, and state agencies as well. We carefully review all comments received, prepared detailed summaries with policy recommendations for each major topic area addressed in the request for information. We then use these comments to develop new guidance to update and explain the credibility of a number of food items that previously did not credit or credited on a limited basis. The result is new flexibility that will allow more options that simplify menu planning, demand food choices, and incentivize participation in the child nutrition program. Several commenters describe the positive impact of crediting these updated options. Comments emphasize the benefits of providing diverse and culturally appropriate menu options. 
In response to public comment, we also announced late last year that we would expand food crediting to a number of other food items, including coconut, hominy, popcorn, corn masa and masa harina, dried meat products, serene seafood, and tempeh. While today's webinar is focused on crediting popcorn, hominy, coconut, I'm sorry, uh, popcorn, hominy, corn masa, and masa harina, we wanted to briefly highlight these other options for you as well. One of the items we will focus on during today's webinar is crediting popcorn, which is covered in a policy released on April 17th called Crediting Popcorn and Child Nutrition Programs. We are also going to focus on crediting coconut, hominy, corn masa, and masa cream. An updated policy memo was released on August 22nd, 2019, which rescinded and replaced prior policy on the coconut, hominy, corn masa, and corn flour that had been released earlier this year on April 17th, 2019. These new crediting flexibilities are a reflection of our commitment to staying up to date with an evolving and expanding nutrition environment. Looking ahead, USDA will continue in its efforts to identify additional options that simplify the menu planning process while ensuring program operators and participants have access to a wide variety of nutritious food choices. Thank you for your time and attention today. Now let's hear again from my colleague, Deborah. Thanks, Tim, and hello again, everyone. <clears throat> Before diving into examples for popcorn, hominy, corn masa, and masa harina, I want to point out that dried coconut is now creditable in child nutrition programs per the updated crediting memo on coconut, hominy, corn masa, and masa harina that was released on August 22nd. Our previous RFI webinar that was held on May 22nd stated that dried coconut was not creditable, so I want to make sure you are aware of the updated guidance. For crediting examples for fresh or frozen coconut, please review this archived webinar. So just to confirm, the following forms are now creditable in our program. Fresh or frozen coconut, and ju juices labeled as 100% juice to include coconut water, these items credit based on volume served. The dry coconut is also credible, and like other dried fruits, it credits twice the volume served for school meals in the child and adult care food program. The yields for these newly credible foods have been added to the food buying guide. So there is now yield information provided for serini seafood, tempeh, coconut, popcorn, hominy, and hominy grits. Also, before we go into the specifics of the food items covered today, we want to provide some details on the Food Buying Guide resources. For those of you who are new to the Food Buying Guide digital resources, let's go ahead and review the main features. Both the Food Buying Guide interactive web-based tool and the Food Buying Guide mobile app include the following basic features that are available to guest users and registered users of the tool. These features include the ability to search for food items by food groups and further narrow the search by food categories, the capability to do a side-by-side -side comparison of food items within a food category, such as comparing diced canned carrots to diced fresh carrots. In addition, you can create a favorite foods list. You can also access the resources as a guest user or a registered user. As a registered user, you have additional features and capabilities such as saving a favorite foods list and then accessing it at a later time. As a guest user, you can still save a favorite foods list and access it only during your current session, as well as print and email it. The interactive food buying guide has four other features mm -hmm. built in. The recipe analysis workbook, otherwise known as the RAW, is available to registered users. The RAW allows the user to easily search for the food buying guide Search the food buying guide for credible ingredients listed in a standardized recipe. The selected food items will auto-populate into the raw and calculate the item's crediting information based on the amounts entered by the user. The meal pattern contribution is calculated, and the meal pattern contribution statement for the standardized recipe can be saved, printed, and emailed. The product formulation statement workbook is available to food vendors with registered accounts. 
This feature allows vendors to easily search the food buying guide for food items. The selected food items will auto-populate into the workbook and calculate the product's crediting information based on the amounts entered by the vendor. In addition, the PFS workbook will generate a certified contribution statement on a company's letterhead. Manufacturers may use the document generated from the PFS workbook to communicate with child nutrition program operators on how their product credits to federal meal pattern requirements. One of the newer features is the Food Buying Guide Calculator. The FBG calculator will create a shopping list to assist child nutrition program operators in ordering and purchasing food for their programs, available on both the web tool and the mobile app. And most recently, we have developed the Exhibit A grains tool to simplify calculating ounce equivalents or grain spread servings using Exhibit A. The Exhibit A grains tool allows the user to easily determine the ounce equivalent or grain spread servings for your grain product. In addition, the tool allows the user to determine the amount to serve in order to provide a desired grains contribution in ounce equivalents or grain spread servings. This tool is available on both the interactive tool and the FBG mobile app. So moving on to our first example, we have Pop Popcorn, which is now creditable in child nutrition programs and it credits as a whole grain. This means that it counts towards the whole grain rich requirements in school meals in the child and adult care food program and credits towards the grain requirement in the summer food service program and the NSLP after school snacks. In our example here, if a 0.75 ounce serving is offered, then it will credit as 0.75 ounce equivalent grains. Please keep in mind that weight and volume can vary based on added ingredients. Since this serving of popcorn may not meet the grains requirement for each meal program participant, an additional grain item may need to be served in order to meet the grains requirement for a meal or snack. As possible menu options, a program operator could serve popcorn in a trail mix with pretzels and cereal for a snack, or serve it with a whole grain wrap in school meals. In addition, program operators who pop their own popcorn may choose to determine the meal pattern contribution based on weight or volume served. Listed here are some points to remember. For school meals, ingredients and toppings, such as salt, caramel, cheese, and butter, will be limited due to dietary specifications for calories, saturated fat, and sodium. For the child and adult care food program and summer meals, we encourage fresh, plain popcorn or popcorn topped with herb blends be offered. Please also keep in mind that discretion should be used when determining if a popcorn product is perceived to be a grain-based dessert and program operators need to consider the developmental readiness of children and the ability of disabled or older adults to swallow safely when deciding to offer popcorn. Our next example is for hominy, which in its whole form credits based on volume served as a vegetable or specifically as a starchy vegetable for school meals. For this example, we have a standardized recipe for Mexicali hominy which consists of canned hominy combined with red and green bell peppers, pimentos, and Mexican spices. The quantity of credible ingredients for the recipe are listed here for 25 servings. You can see we have fresh diced onions, fresh diced green and red bell peppers, canned hominy, and canned chopped and drained pimentos. I will now show you some screenshots of this recipe as these credible ingredients are entered into the recipe analysis workbook, which can be used to determine the meal pattern contribution for a standardized recipe. The raw tool, as noted earlier, is accessible on the food buying guide for child nutrition programs to all registered users with the exception of food vendors. The raw allows you to easily search for credible ingredients that are used to determine the meal pattern contribution for a standardized recipe. The contribution statement for the standardized recipe can then be printed to keep in your files.
Once I add the recipe details at the top of the screen, I can then search for the credible ingredients. In this case, I have already searched for and selected all the credible ingredients except hominy. Here are those ingredients. To search for hominy, I'll enter it here and then click the search button. Here are the search results for hominy products. I can then select the item I need by clicking the Add button, as circled here in red. Under the Vegetables tab, I can enter the quantity of ingredient as called for in the recipe and enter a preparation yield if needed. I've circled in red the quantity of ingredient and preparation yield that were entered for hominy. The recipe calls for two pounds, eight ounces of hominy, which equals 40 ounces. I can enter a preparation yield of one, 105, since this is the number of ounces of hominy in a number 10 can, which is used to calculate the, the quantity of hominy to purchase, as well as the meal pattern contribution. You can see I've also filled in the information for the other credible and vegetable ingredients as well. Under the meal Pattern Contribution tab is a listing of the meal components based on the recipe's credible ingredients. Also, circled in red is the meal pattern contribution statement. For this standardized recipe, a quarter cup of Mexicali hominy provides a quarter cup of vegetables. For school meals, a serving provides an eighth cup of additional vegetable and an eighth cup of starchy vegetable. I realize that I went through this raw example pretty quickly. For additional guidance on how to use the raw, please check out the training video that is available on the Food Buying Guide interactive web tool under the Help menu. And we also have a recorded webinar on the raw that is available on the Institute of Child Nutrition Child Nutrition's website titled Team Up for Innovative Menu Planning with the Food Buying Guide web-based tool. We're now going to move on to grits. So first, let's see how many of you know the type of grits that is credible in child nutrition programs. So which of the following are now creditable? The hominy grits, whole grain grits, or whole corn grits, enriched grits, option D is A, B, and C, or option E is all products labeled as grits are credible in child nutrition programs. So if we could open up the poll. Most of you selected D, which is fantastic. For hominy grits, whole corn grits, and enriched grits, that is correct. Hominy grits and products specifying that the corn is whole corn can be credited as whole grain. Products labeled as enriched grits can be credited as enriched grains, and grits labeled simply as grits, bone ground corn, or de germ corn are not credible in child nutrition programs. Let's take a look at this example for hominy grits. As I just mentioned, hominy grits now credit as a whole grain in child nutrition programs. The ingredients listed for this product is hominy grits made from corn. And the serving size I'm going to offer is a half cup cooked. Here is a screenshot of Exhibit A, Grain Requirements for Child Nutrition Programs. I can see that a half cup cooked or one ounce of dry hominy grits equals one ounce equivalent whole grains or one grain spread serving for summer meals and the NSLP after school snacks as highlighted here. So as I just noted, based on the information provided in Exhibit A, a half cup cooked or one ounce of dry hominy grits provides one ounce equivalent grains or one grain bread serving. While I used Exhibit A to determine the crediting for hominy grits in this example, you may also use the crediting information listed in the food buying guide to determine the grain's contribution and also how much to purchase for your program. Our next example is for restaurant style corn tortilla chips. The ingredients are listed for this product, and I want to point out that the first ingredient is whole white corn 
And the last ingredient is lime slash calcium hydroxide, which is a processing aid during nixtamalization of corn. As explained in the memo Q&A, nixtamalization is a process in which dry corn is soaked and cooked in an alkaline solution. This process increases the bioavailability of certain nutrients. Hominy, along with corn masa and masa harina, are products that contain nixtamalized corn. For grain products with an ingredient statement that indicates the corn is treated with lime, such as in this example, the corn ingredient credits as though it is whole grain. As you can see here, this is a screenshot of Exhibit A, and for tortilla chips, which are listed in Group B, one ounce equivalent is equal to 28 grams or one ounce. Or for programs that do not require ounce equivalents to determine the grains contribution, one grain bread serving is equal to 25 grams or 0.9 ounces. Here are the calculations for determining the grains credit for one serving of these corn tortilla chips which is equal to one ounce or 28 grams. First, to calculate the ounce equivalent, the 28 gram serving of chips is divided by 28 grams per ounce equivalent as listed on Exhibit A. This equals one ounce equivalent grain. Next, to calculate the grain spread serving, the 28 gram serving of chips is divided by 25 grams per serving as listed on Exhibit A. This equals 1.12, which is rounded down to the nearest quarter serving, which is one grain spread serving. I also want to point out, as I mentioned earlier, that we now have the Exhibit A grains tool available on the interactive food buying guide, which allows the user to easily determine the ounce equivalent grains or grain spread servings for your grain product. In addition to using Exhibit A, these tortilla chips can also credit based on the amount of credible grains per serving. Here's an example of a manufacturer's product formulation statement with the crediting information for a serving of these chips. You can see the product formulation statement provides the following information for the tortilla chips. The product name, product code, and serving size, a listing of the credible ingredient and the amount per serving, the meal pattern contribution statement. Our next example is for corn chips, and we're going to do a quiz. So true or false, are these corn chips creditable as a grain product in child nutrition programs based on the list of ingredients? And these ingredients are corn, corn oil, and salt. So if we could open up the poll to allow you to select what you think is the correct answer. And I can see the results here, and it looks like it's a little bit, we have more people who think that they do not credit, and that is correct. Very good. Um, this is because the ingredient is just stated as corn. It is not listed as whole corn, nor does the ingredient list in indicate that it has been nixtamalized or enriched. Okay, this is going to be our final example, and here we have white corn tortillas. The ingredients are listed for this product. As you can see, corn masa flour is listed as the first ingredient, which means the corn has been nixtamalized, and therefore, this ingredient credits as though it is a whole grain. Again, this is a screenshot of Exhibit A, and for tortillas, which are listed in Group B, one ounce equivalent is equal to 28 grams or one ounce, or for programs that do not require ounce equivalents to determine the grain contribu contribution, one grain spread serving is equal to 25 grams or 0.9 ounces. Here are the calculations for determining the grains credit for one serving of these tortillas, which is equal to two tortillas or 47 grams. First, to calculate the ounce equivalent, the 47 gram serving of tortillas is divided by 28 grams per ounce equivalent, as listed on Exhibit A. This equals 1.67, which is rounded down to the nearest ounce equivalent, and that is 1.50. So two 
two tortillas or 47 grams provides 1.5 ounce equivalent grains. Next, to calculate the grains bread serving, the 47 gram serving of tortillas is divided by 25 grams per serving as listed on Exhibit A. This equals 1.88, which is rounded down to the nearest quarter serving and that is 1.75. So, two tortillas or 47 grams provides 1.75 grain spread servings. I'm now going to hand the presentation over to Anne, who will provide an overview of some of our menu planning resources available for team nutrition. Hello, everyone. I'm Anne Garceau, and I'm program analyst here at the Food and Nutrition Service. And I'm going to talk to you today about some of our team nutrition resources. But first, let's take a moment uh, to do our final poll and see how many of you are already familiar with the following menu planning resources available through Team Nutrition. We have listed here USDA standardized recipes for child nutrition programs, recipe e-newsletter, the menu planner for school meals, the CN label verification report, USDA approved software, other team nutrition resources that are not listed here such as the food buying guide for the child nutrition program. Or are you familiar with all of these resources? Or are these all new to you? So let's just take a moment and do our final poll. So it looks like some of you are familiar with, um, with all of our resources, which is great. And then others um, maybe would like to learn some more. So first I'm going to highlight our USDA standardized recipes. These recipes provide child nutrition program operators with delicious new dishes to assist them with meeting CN meal pattern requirements. They are developed to include legumes, whole grain, and or dark green, red, and or orange vegetables. The recipes have been standardized to provide consistent quality and yield. They also provide crediting information, including the vegetable subgroups. This recipe collection contains 200 new and updated mouthwatering USDA standardized recipes for use in child nutrition programs. USDA standardized recipes for school meals and the child and adult care food program will soon be available on the child nutrition recipe box hosted by the Institute of Child Nutrition. We'll be gradually adding all of our recipes to the recipe box over the next few weeks. On September 20, 2019, the What's Cooking USDA Mixing Bowl recipe website will be transitioning to choosemyplate.gov and will focus on recipes for households. If you want to save and download any recipes or cookbooks that you may have on the current site, please do so before September 20, 2018. Please be aware that your current What's Cooking credentials and content will no longer be accessible as of Friday, September 20, 2019. Team Nutrition also provides a recipe newsletter. If you subscribe to correspondence from Team Nutrition, you should be receiving our recipe newsletter. To sign up for our newsletters, go to the Team Nutrition link shown on this slide. The next resource I'm going to tell you about is the menu planner for school meals for school year 2018-2019. The menu planner for school meals school year 2018-2019 was released this past September, last September. It is currently being updated to meet the meal pattern requirements for the coming school year. This foundational resource for school nutrition professionals provides step-by-step -step meal planning guidance and helps schools to put the dietary guidelines for Americans into practice. It is designed to guide the planning, preparing, providing, and marketing of great tasting, nutritious, and safe meals that meet the federal meal pattern requirements. The menu planner provides information to help integrate key topics in school nutrition programs such as nutrition, food safety, farm to school, USDA food, seasonal food, marketing, and addresses things that will equip schools for the administrative review. The goal of the menu planner is to merge the technical guidance with additional support resources in a step-by-step -step guide to planning quality reimbursable school meals that appeal to students. Let's take a closer look into the menu planner's content. It's broken up into seven comprehensive chapters and includes appendices. The menu planner also contains features such as school spotlights, check your understanding quizzes, food safety tips, and much more. 
Next is the CN Label Verification Reporting System. USDA developed a system to assist state agency reviewers, CN program operators, and the food industry to verify the status of a CN label and the validity of a CN label copied with a watermark. The verification system produces two comprehensive reports. The CN label report, which not only provides the status of the label, but also includes the serving size and the meal pattern contribution of the product. The second report provides the manufacturer's contact information. Next we have the USDA approved software for menu analysis. USDA evaluates and approves two types of software for use in the school meals program. The first is nutrient analysis software approved for use in the school meals program. The second type of software is menu planning software approved for use in certification of compliance with the National School Lunch Program meal pattern. All software is submitted to USDA for review voluntarily by private software companies. All submitted software undergoes a rigorous standardized evaluation process to ensure that all the requirements for the software have been met before it's approved. Uh, we'd also like to announce that we have a new page on the Team Nutrition website for the crediting updates for Child Nutrition Programs Be in the Know webinar series. On this page, you will be able to register for upcoming webinars in the series link to past webinar recordings in the series once they are available, and also it links to the uh, new memo as well. And finally, please feel free to visit our website, subscribe to our bi-monthly e-newsletter, connect with us via email at teamnutrition at usda.gov, and follow us on Twitter. And anyway, thank you for joining us, and please enjoy the rest of your day.